Hi, welcome to Climbing Daily. Coming up on today's show, we've got news of a 20-year-old Italian boulder on the rampage in the States. We get all the latest news from the Nanga Parbat winter attempts. And we preview the latest episode of the epic TV series, The Hazel Finley Days. First up, we've got news of 20-year-old Italian climber Nicolo Seria, who is over in the United States making very short work of some of their toughest boulder problems. His first stop was Red Rocks, Nevada, where he made fast ascents of several 8As and a couple of 8Bs, but the highlight was definitely climbing Paul Robinson's Meadow Lark Lemon 8B+. Nicolo is now off to Bishop, so we'll be keeping you updated with his progress. Up next, we've got all the latest news from the Nanga Parbat winter attempts. So far, bad weather has hampered most people's attempts, but it seems that Simone Morrow and his partner David Gutler have got the highest thus far. They reached 7,000 metres a couple of days ago and have now descended to base camp. Meanwhile, the four-man Polish team, who are attempting the Schnell route as well, have established camps at 6,200 metres. And finally, Italian soloist Daniel Nardi has arrived in the Diamir base camp and begun his acclimatisation. The other solo attempt this year from German climber Ralf Dumowitz has already ended because he deemed the Serac band above one of the key camps on the Diamir route to be too dangerous. Daniel is planning on following the same route, so it'll be interesting to see how he finds it. Bad weather's now arrived on the mountain, so it may be a week or so before we have any more news. We'll keep you updated on the situation as we hear, but my money is still on Simone and David. To finish, we've got a snippet from the latest episode of Hazel Days, and this time Hazel is climbing on the Grand Jurass right here in Chamonix. I actually make an appearance, but on paper. There's a cryptic one for you. So we spent the next day walking up. It was about six hours approach, mostly just walking, but it was really steep. And then we had to do some soloing over easy ground. At one point we had to rope up because it was pretty hard smearing on the granite in our mountain boots. But apart from that, it was a pretty easy day. And we arrived at the Jackie Hut. Um, had amazing, like, 360 degree views all across the Italian Valfere. There's like four sort of small beds in there, but pretty comfortable and there's blankets, so we didn't have to bring sleeping bags with us. It's quite nice as well because uh, unlike a lot of huts in the Mont Blanc range, not many people go to this one. On average, four parties a year go to the Jackia hut, so it felt quite quiet and remote. We looked through the guest book, and it's quite interesting because we actually knew one of the British teams in there from a few years ago. And it's quite nice to see the stories of other people and what they were doing when they were up there. And we arrived in time to make our dinner and watch the sunset. So the plan was to wake up at about four in the morning and we guessed that it was about three or four hours to the base of the wall but in actual fact we woke up at four and we spent eight hours reaching the base of the wall. There's Peter doing the abs onto the ledge system, that snowy ledge system that we'll then take across to the base of the route. It took ages for us to get here and a um, very complicated approach along the ridge line back there um, and it was not, I mean it's easy climbing but it's really tiring, carrying the rucksack, route finding the whole time, climbing over really chossy ground, um, not really knowing where we were going. Um, so yeah, it's not really the best start but I guess we're signed up for a long day the views are pretty spectacular. We started the route at two in the afternoon, which was a lot later than we expected. When we started, it felt very committing because we were already way behind schedule. We already knew that we didn't have that many hours light left. It never looked as long and complicated as it actually ended up being. It's basically this sort of knife edge ridge of choss. You'd think it's easy to navigate along a ridge, but it ended up taking forever. It's now been climbed by 42-year-old Fabrizio Perry, and it's his first 9A. Fabrizio's got a wife, a family, a full-time job, and it just goes to show you that...